All righty. So what's up, everybody? I'm Jacob Cabazuto with Cab Training, and today I'm with Dana Eshelman, a sports dietitian, and we're going to talk about the importance of nutrition with youth athletes and athletes of all ages. Um, we're going to talk about various nutrition subjects and then answer some frequently asked questions, along with probably answering some misconceptions with nutrition as well. But I want to give Dana the floor to start and have her introduce herself and we'll get this thing started. Awesome. Yeah. So I'm Dana Eshelman. Um, I've been doing nutrition now for about four years or five years now um, and have a pretty significant background as an athlete myself um, between running, um, track, triathlon, soccer. So um, I understand the both sides of the, the spectrum from being an athlete and dealing with my own nutrition stuff as and the performance aspects of uh, proper nutrition versus like not so great nutrition. And then um, from the sports dietitian side, seeing both an, ends of the spectrum as well. So, yeah. Sounds good. <laughs> what made you want to get into nutrition just because you were an athlete and that and that really interests you? Yeah. So a couple things. So, um, I started nutrition more on the side of wanting to work, um, in clinical in terms of preventing disease and, um, especially on the realm of gut health. <clears throat> and so that's where I actually started. My nutrition career was in, um, a hospital clinic setting. And then, um, quickly discovered that I, I wanted to do more with nutrition and especially on the realm of working with athletes and just helping um, athletes develop and under and really understand the benefits of, hey, you know, nutrition can uh, um, really make the difference between a good athlete and a great athlete. So how do we start to collaborate on that realm and understand not only the benefits of like the pre-workout nutrition, but also how do we recover properly so that we can hit that next session just as hard. Absolutely. Um, and you are working towards a certification for just kind of moving your career on to the next level. What is that again? I, remind me of that. Yeah. So it's the certified specialist in sports dietetics. So it's CSSD. Um, and that, so that is basically you have, uh, I think it's 1200 hours of sports nutrition, um, under your belt, essentially, um, mm -hmm. which I'm pretty close to having that complete. So it's just more or less submitting the paperwork and getting, getting the letters. <laughs> gotcha. So, yeah. Well, in, um, as most people know, I train more like kids from like age six to age 18, Mm -hmm. um, what's your favorite like age of athlete or what's your range? Not just favorite, but like, what's your range of athlete that you enjoy training the most? Yeah. So gosh, I, I mean, I truly love youth athletes because there's so much behind, um, not only just the performance nutrition, but also like developmental nutrition and, um, and really educating them on variety, uh, cause a, a lot of times we have picky eaters, right. And I'm sure parents can very much relate to that and, and how to integrate, um, more variety in their diet. Um, but I also have a realm of athletes that are that middle-aged, um, probably the parents of these youth athletes, um, that I really love working with too, and just dealing with a new, a new phase of their life, um, with hormone changes and balance. So, yeah. Yeah. So when you mention nutrition, I think a lot of people have a very simplified view. Maybe they just think what, it's what you eat and drink. What all comprises nutrition? And um, yeah. Yeah, that's a that's a really good question. Um, so, gosh, nutrition is so much more than just like calories in, calories out. Um, nutrition is really <clears throat> how how we fuel our bodies, how our bodies are feeling. Um, we want to look at beyond just macronutrients, which are, is our protein, carbohydrates, and fats. But we also want to look at our micronutrients and the antioxidant properties of food. So our vitamins and minerals and how those are benefiting our body, um, not only for things like immunity, but also for like recovery and energy levels and um, 
different functions that our bodies need those nutrients for. Um, and then, you know, a broader spectrum of nutrition is also like the sleep and how nutrition affects our sleep, um, stress management and how different foods can affect our stress levels. And especially, like I said earlier, um, one of my favorite things is the gut health and the gut microbiome where the bacteria in our gut and how different foods ultimately affect our gut health. So that's kind of like big picture nutrition. Yeah. It's funny you mentioned sleep because it's, it's crazy because some of the families that I train, their kids go to bed at seven 30, some of them at 10. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't, um, and then my little brother, he's six years old and he, he gets tired at like two o'clock in the more in the afternoon. And so how much sleep, let's just say from shoot the start of an athlete's career, let's just say six or seven. And then as that progresses into like high school age, how does like sleep taper off with like how many hours you need? Yeah. Um, gosh. And that is really different. Cause as we're younger, we are going through so much more development. Um, mm -hmm. And when we're resting is when our body is recovering and developing and growing. And that is all the way through our life cycle. So <clears throat> sleep changes through our life cycle and how much we need based on different growth spurts, um, life cycles, et cetera. So younger years, we need more sleep. Um, you know, it's recommended anywhere from seven to 10 hours. And then as we progress more towards those high school years, um, males and females will vary a little differently because females um, uh, mature earlier. And so those middle school years for females tend to be where they need the most sleep, whereas males, maybe those like sophomore through senior years of high school, they need mo more sleep. And that still can range seven to 10 hours. Um, and truly everyone's different. Yeah. So even as we get older, you may need, you may feel best at seven hours. Whereas like, I know for sure that I need anywhere from eight to nine hours to feel my best, right. um, you know? Um, and, and that's just, that's just biochemically a variance. So. Gotcha. Yeah. It's, it's <laughs> that sleep alters performance i had oh, i have yeah. kids on the weekends who come out on saturdays they know who they are <laughs> and they were like doing like they were cooking or something at midnight and they come out at 9 a.m for a session and they're and they're dead and they're exhausted so it's totally uh, true yeah yeah sleep is um i mean again like i said is where our bodies build and recover and mm -hmm. so in order to really reap all the benefits from your training um sleep is where you're getting that um sleep is where you're you get into what's called your REM sleep the rapid eye movement um actually primarily before those midnight hours is where you get your best sleep and so um that is I mean a huge huge component to performance um you know it plays into our focus levels uh, all of it so okay so back on the nutrition topic <laughs> macronutrients so i always hear like gym bros saying that they have to get their macros in i need to try and pay more attention to my macros um what are macronutrients and why are they important to the youth athlete yeah so there's three different macros so we have protein carbohydrates fat all of them play a role in our bodies um <clears throat> so Carbohydrates and protein are less dense than fat. Um, carbohydrates and protein provide four calories per gram, whereas fat provides nine calories per gram. Um, if you're a numbers person, I hope that makes sense. And then the biggest difference between them, and I'll explain each one in depth here is, so carbohydrates, Basically, we want to think of those as our energy fuel, our quick source of energy that we're going to need during our workouts. Um, it helps fuel explosive activity. Um, think about sprinting, changing direction, um, lifting weights. Uh, mm -hmm. All of that is carbohydrates. Our brain <laughs> primarily uses carbohydrates for fuel. Um, <clears throat> and so that's, that's carbohydrates in a nutshell. 
Um, carbohydrate foods are things like your fruits, your vegetables, um, whole grains are what's recommended. And then really when you get down to it, things like sweets um, are carbohydrates as well, but those are things that we want to limit in our nutrition. Um, and then that's, yeah, that's the bulk of carbohydrate. Um, protein, protein foods are what help build and restore your tissue. So I will say, think of protein as those muscle building um, components. But beyond that, it's also building and restoring tissues, um, especially if, if you get an injury, proteins are what's helping build those tissues back up um, and helping you recover. Um, different protein foods, uh, you think of dairy products, um, so milk, cheeses, um, you, you know, meats, that's a, a primary one, poultry. Um, if you don't do dairy or meats or poultry um, and you're, you're vegetarian or vegan, beans or legumes, <clears throat> nuts and seeds are a protein source. And then things like soy, tofu, um, tempeh, all of those are really great sources of protein as well. And then your fats are really what help cushion our vital organs. They also help um, the right types of fats help decrease inflammation and are really important for healing. Um, and so when we think about fats, the, the healthy fats are the ones we want to include more of are things, again, nuts and seeds. So nuts and seeds are both a protein and a fat. And then also our oil. So things like olive oil, avocado oil, um, walnut oil, all of the oils. Um, and then also um, if you do like grass-fed beef or butters, those are a good healthy fat. Um, fatty fish, so things like salmon, mackerel, tuna, um, sardines, all of those are really high in um, healthy fats. And then when we talk about unhealthy fats, um, my best example is when we get like a, a big steak with the marbling in it, the white component of that is called saturated fat. And the saturated fat is something we want to decrease in our diet overall. And just because it causes inflammation in our body, and so any inflammation in our body base is not good. <laughs> um, and so it can cause things like chronic disease or lead to injury, things like that. So gotcha. that is macros in a nutshell. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah. Uh, okay. So I have a lot of questions about, uh, I get this a lot from kids that I train post-workout or pre-workout fuel, what macronutrients should you focus on pre and or post-workout? And when's the right time to fuel up or like for to optimize muscle building for before or after a workout? Yeah, great questions. Pre-workout, carbohydrates. Focus on your carbs. Again, <clears throat> carbs give energy. So that's what's going to help fuel your workouts going to give your muscles that quick burst that it needs to get through sprints, running, reps, changing direction, all the things. Um, and then post-workout, you want to focus on a, a carb and protein. So when you think about formulating a meal, um, you know, you can do like a peanut butter and jelly sandwich is a great post-workout um, turkey sandwich, um, that's quick to go. If you are really crunched for time, something like a protein shake with a piece of fruit, those are really great examples. Um, and ideally the reason why we do protein and carbohydrate protein, again, helps build and restore that muscle. Carbohydrate helps build and restore that muscle, but as well as our sugar stores, which is called glycogen in our muscles that we've utilized during exercise. So it's helping all of that muscle regrowth, recovery, and then um, help you get out to your next session stronger. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay, let's go away from like food and let's talk about hydration. Yeah. Uh, when I was in high school, the only thing really about hydration that my coaches said is if your pee is clear <laughs> or lemonade, that's good. Yeah. But I feel like as I've learned a little bit more over time 
there's a healthy way to hydrate yourself mm-hmm. and an unhealthy way to hydrate yourself. So yeah. it kind of answers some questions on just how the best optimal way to hydrate yourself is. Yeah. So hydration, um, it really, especially like Arizona, it's hot here, um, mm. all year round. And so super important to, I, I you always hear me say hydrate early and often. And so what I mean by that is consistently drinking throughout the day, not just like guzzling, um, at one point, sorry, my, I, my allergies are bothering me. So I oh. apologize if I'm wiping no. my eyes, no, um, but not just guzzling a whole thing of water in one sitting because ultimately what happens with that is our body is not able to uptake that and so you're going to be urinating clear (laughs) more often in that next like one to two hour period Mm -hmm. whereas if we're consistent throughout the day drinking water um our body's able to actually utilize that water and -hmm. uptake it um more consistently um so beyond just like water intake hydration can cover any fluids um that are decaffeinated so you know i mean there's so much on the market but like sports drinks um are are actually considered hydration even though they're loaded with sugar which is a huge other topic that we can talk about um you know, smoothies. Um, if you drink like herbal teas, um, those are actually considered hydrating, even decaf coffee. Um, and so you can count those towards your fluid intake, but again, with the sugar component being cognizant of like, is my body utilizing this? So usually I won't, I don't recommend, um, sports drinks or beverages on just a normal day-to-day hydration but an activity that you're doing for over an hour. So if you're having, if you are in a game or in practice or in training for over an hour, your body actually is going to be using that sugar um, and putting it to work. So, and then it has the electrolyte component of that. So um, those are the times that I would recommend a sports drink. Gotcha. So, yeah. I've got a couple questions. I think I'm going to start with electrolytes. Now, the only time I see electrolytes is on the side of a Powerade bottle, and I don't <laughs> know what they actually mean, like literally, and I, I might yeah. be my own hand here, but uh, <laughs> what is what are electrolytes and what do they do out like to adjust for hydration and stuff? <clears throat> Great question. So electrolytes, the primary electrolytes that we're going to be seeing, um, sodium is a big one, chloride, potassium, magnesium. Um <clears throat> Those electrolytes um, basically are what we see in a cell, um, whether it's inside or outside the cell. And so when we want to have them in a a balance in order to create appropriate water uptake by the cell, and that's what causes us to be actually hydrated and actually you put the water to work, essentially, um, we lose electrolytes when we sweat, primarily sodium. And so you'll hear me say, especially with um, endurance athletes and even even like uh, you think about football and hockey where they're wearing all the gear, they're sweating way more than your average like athlete, right? Because they have all this gear on them. And so oftentimes when they take off their gear, you can even like rub the side of your face and it's like gritty. That yeah. means you're a salty sweater. And so you might be somebody that's appropriate to actually add salt to your food or um, think about an uh, electrolyte drink that's a little bit higher in sodium um, because of the instance that you're a salty sweater. So I'll use me for an example. Um, I'm a very salty sweater. As, and as a triathlete, I'm sometimes working out for, you know, four or five, six hours. Um, and so my sodium intake is much higher, even, even in my day-to-day nutrition, but especially when I'm working out. And so I actually take little salt tabs, um, while I'm working out and that might be appropriate, especially for, you know, again, those football hockey players, people that have all the gear that they, or if you're working out in a hot or humid climate, um, that's where we really want to pay attention to electrolytes. 
Gotcha. Oh, That's yeah. Great that you brought that up. I was on a bike ride with my friend who's also an endurance athlete. He does half marathons and he really wanted me to talk about sodium and how it yeah. absorbs water and stuff like that. So that's interesting because mm -hmm. you said that it just to you to utilize that water and otherwise that water would just be sitting there in your gut, right? Yeah. So <clears throat> when we think of sodium, sodium attracts water. And so that sodium helps draw the water into the cell so that it's not, yeah, it's not just sitting like a slushy gut is what I call it. It's not just sitting yeah. there in your gut, which ultimately can probably make you sick, right? So yeah. yeah, so it puts puts that water into your system so that you're actually hydrating your muscles. Gotcha. Yep. All right, let's peruse into vitamins and stuff because I think yeah. they're, they're like not as sought after as the hydration and the nutrition aspects. But mm -hmm. when you encounter an athlete that you're coaching on nutrition, what vitamins are they most commonly deficient in? <laughs> Yeah. So sometimes this varies from female to male athlete. Um, and especially you like female athletes, a big one is iron, um, that I find them deficient in. Um, but across the board with athletes, um, things like vitamin D, um, unfortunately most of our population is deficient in vitamin D just because of the nature of being inside most of the time. Um, especially if you're an athlete that your sport is an indoor sport, um, basketball, if you're doing indoor swimming or diving or, um, you know, there's a bunch of sports inside. I'm blanking on them right now, but indoors you're, you're primarily inside. And so you're not seeing the sun, which is our primary source of vitamin D. So vitamin D, um, zinc is often deficient. Um, another thing that our muscles go through much faster with, um, zinc, um, iron again, like I said, calcium, um, calcium helps with muscle contraction and, um, constriction, um, calcium may be a deficient one. Um, and another thing our body just utilizes more of. <clears throat> so those are the biggest ones that I see. Um, electrolytes again, may be a concern more in terms of, of heat and humid climates. So, gotcha. Yeah. All right. So let's go back. I'm going to go through a couple different questions that are like frequently asked, and then mm -hmm. I'll give you kind of an opportunity to ask or maybe address misconceptions and stuff. Sure. But one of the questions I really have is I have a whole bunch of high school kids that need to gain weight before the next season. So high school season's kind of wrapping up. They're in playoffs right now, if they're on varsity. Mm -hmm. And there's guys that are underweight and they need to be ready to start playing against these grown men who are gonna be 18 in varsity, basically. Mm -hmm. um, what do you think? Like, so I'm trying to have them on goal sheets where they gain a couple pounds per month and stuff. What do you think is like the best progression of weight gain over a six month period Mm -hmm. Like, is it healthier to gain how many pounds a month and what's the healthiest way to do so? Great question. So <clears throat> one to two pounds a week is kind of a ballpark. So if you put that into a month, four to eight pounds a month, I know that's a pretty broad spectrum. Um, I yeah. think eight, eight pounds would be very ambitious, especially in a male high school athlete. Um, you know, male metabolism at that age is so fast. So, um, usually what I'll see in a youth male athlete is anywhere from two to four pounds a month, um, is kind of what I, what is, what I see. Um, uh, really in terms of weight gain and, and nutrients to focus on calories and just <laughs> in any form, whatever you're eating, um, you know, unfortunately with, with weight gain, you're, I, I always hear, I just want to gain muscle and you're not just going to see muscle gain. That's the nature of weight gain is you're, you're going to gain muscle. You're going to gain fat, but it's when you hit your goal weight. Now, how do we, how do we start to really focus on that muscle gain, um, and benefiting you in that way? Um, I mean, you increase carbs, protein, and fat. There's not, and everybody will be different in what ratios work for them, but definitely, you know, higher carbohydrate 
diets because one, you're an athlete, and then two, you're male, <laughs> and three, you're working on weight gain. Um, so carbohydrates are really going to help fuel that weight gain. Proteins are going to help build that muscle appropriately. And then fats, again, you know, vital for just our organs and um, immunity and function there. So, gotcha. yeah. And then I had a couple other high school guys talk about, because they're transitioning into off season. Mm -hmm. um, and myself, when I was playing, I usually lost like 10 pounds during the 10 week season. Mm -hmm. And so like, how do you one, uh, fuel yourself in the in season so you don't lose weight mm -hmm. versus then going into the off season how do you transition into the off season eating so you can maintain or grow yeah so definitely you want to be able to understand your balance um obviously during season you know you're <clears throat> especially high school you have practice five to six, maybe seven times a week. Um, and then games on top of that. And so your, your needs are going to be very high. Um, and you know, more often than not, do I see high school athletes either skipping meals or running to the closest fast food place to grab a meal? Um, which, you know, when push comes to shove high school athletes can probably get away with that. But when we look down the line in terms of, um, performance and progression there, it's, you would really benefit from the smaller consistent meals throughout the day. Um, and what I mean by that is planning, planning ahead all the time, um, making sure that you're, you're waking up in time to either make yourself food to take with you, or that you have a plan to buy food at school, um, that you have snack before practice, that you're optimizing recovery fuel after practice within an hour window after practice. Um, all of that is going to play into performance and then play into your ability to maintain body composition during season. Um, and then post season and after season, you know, your energy needs are going to decrease. You're not training as hard. Um, and so big picture Focusing on protein, um, you want to have your carbohydrate needs are still going to be higher um, just because of the nature of being a youth athlete. But um, really, if especially if you're working on weight gain in the off season, um, you want to look towards doing, I would say doing about 50 to 60 percent of your diet and carbohydrate and then anywhere from 20 to 30 percent in protein and then the rest um, in fat. So that's really, you want to have no less than 20% of your diet in fat. So, yeah. yeah. Okay. So then um, let's talk about this. Cause this is actually a story I haven't told a lot of people before. One time we were in the weight room and one of my coaches was basically did this whole like thing into his arm, pretending like I was doing steroids or something. Like he, he like <laughs> kind of said, Oh, he must be on steroids or something. So mm -hmm. that kind of brings me subject of supplements and obviously steroids are terrible but there's a lot of misconceptions when it comes to supplements so namely creatine yeah and so would you recommend creatine to an athlete 14 and older and what are the benefits of creatine yeah so creatine is actually one of the supplements that has so many performance benefits um and lots of research actually shown behind that Youth athletes specifically, I don't, I'm not super fond on supplements, maybe, maybe yeah. protein powder at, at the most, um, if they, if they need it, but I mean, creatine in a whole, yes, it helps, um, helps with muscle, muscle growth. It helps with that initial, um, energy production through, through production of what's called ATP or energy in our, in our body to help, um, help you lift strong or, um, help you lift heavier to help grow those muscles stronger. But in any, any youth athlete, we, you know, we kind of, we want to be careful in terms of supplementation one, because supplements aren't regulated. Um, and so always, always making sure that it's third party tested, um, which, off the top of my head, I, I, I don't know creatine 
a creatine um, that's third party tested, I would have to, I'd have to get back to you on that. But um, so, I mean, I don't know, in a nutshell is just creatine or supplements in general for a youth athlete is not something I generally push. Um, So, yeah. (laughs) Are there any supplements? Are there any other supplements that you would recommend to, um, to any athletes? Um, I mean, like I said, protein powder would be probably the only thing and more on a convenience level, just because of, you know, I get it. Like being in school and being an athlete, you, your schedules are busy. So sometimes that's, that's realistic. Um, especially if you're going from school to practice and have like a small window between sometimes that's, that's just what works. Um, so that would be the only one. Um, and then, I mean, in terms of making sure you're getting in all of those micronutrients that we talked about earlier, simply Mm -hmm. just like a multivitamin sometimes is a good cushion, um, to have, especially, you know, if you know that you're, you're not getting in all your fruits and veggies and the proteins and all of that. So, yeah. Gotcha. (laughs) Okay, so this is also a very specific question. This is a little bit, I guess, different section, I guess. But um, I have a, I've trained about 150 kids. And I think a good portion of the kids that I train between, let's just say the age of eight to like 12 or 13 um, would not be as like strong or flexible or, or fit as the other ones are. And do we chalk that up to activity, diet, or just them growing? Because there's kids, I was a pudgy kid when I was little, I was 120 some pounds when I was like 10. And, (laughs) and I kind of started growing out when I was like in eighth grade, but Mm -hmm. would you chalk that up to diet growth or just the way they are? Honestly, it, it could be a combination. Um, usually youth athletes in general, um, it's a lot of genetics, right? So it, you know, how our bodies form, kids go through such a a rough patch, right? We, we gain a little bit of weight and then we stretch out and grow. And then it kind of follows that through, through our entire youth period. And so, um, that's very normal. Um, and athleticism can vary based on your growth spurts. Um, you know, I think, I know I'm thinking back to my years of when I had a really awkward growth spurt where my feet grew first and then I was little and I was tripping over my feet and, you know, so athleticism can vary through your life, like life stages. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so another kind of unrelated question, but this one's kind of specific to you and in your profession. Um, how do you, as a, a nutrition coach, coordinate with a strength coach yeah. when it comes to like, optimizing a kid's performance good question right. so yeah. again um with nutrition i i don't just focus on like food in food out um kind of thing it's more um that collaboration um especially if they are like for example if they're working with you you and i would have this communication of like hey you know, how, how are they performing in, in your, um, speed and agility? Um, are you seeing improvements? Are they plateauing? Are they regressing? Um, which would I would hope would never be the case, but you know, all that actually like really plays into your nutrition and, and could go deeper with things like sleep and stress. And so that's why I look at the whole picture. Um, and that collaboration is really, I mean, really crucial because there could be deficiencies in their nutrition, um, that we're not, that I'm not seeing, you know, with their, their food logs, et cetera, but you're obviously seeing as a, as a coach. And so that's why that communication is key is because it goes so much deeper than just like, what are you eating? You know, how are you performing? Are your, are you seeing like dips in energy levels? Are they not making it through practice? You know, what, like, can their, can their pre-workout nutrition improve? So all of that. (laughs) Gotcha. Um, So that's really kind of my last specific question I have for you. Mm -hmm. Um, 
I guess you, um, I want to kind of give you the floor to either answer against any misconceptions about nutrition or any major problems you face as yeah. a coach or, or any specific things that you go through. Yeah. So I think just nutrition in a whole, um, people generally see a dietitian and think the immediate of a diet. Um, and that definitely, I would say I'm, I'm more of like anti-diet. Um, I don't focus on, on, um, weight loss. I'm much more on the performance side and making sure that, especially like youth athletes, we're focusing on, you know, good habits and building, um, proper nutrition habits so that when they go to the next level, you know, collegiate, et cetera, if they want to, you know, go all the way to the top, then how are they developing these habits to, to get there and make sure that they're performing their best. Um, and so that's really, I mean, my view on nutrition, um, misconceptions that I see in, in the sports world, I think, um, I've seen many things. So, in terms of carbs are bad, um, and, and that side of things. Um, but as I talked about earlier is carbs really are our energy building systems. Um, they help us perform, um, carbs as an athlete are your best friends. So don't dive into the diet culture fat of no carbs. Um, super important for performance. Um, whether you're a male athlete or female athlete, carbs are great. Um, in terms of uh, <laughs> protein, um, protein is something else that I've seen is just like, especially more on the, the strength and, um, explosive side, explosive athletes, you know, we, we see protein just pushed and pushed and pushed, like you need more protein. And yeah. it's actually the, a lot of, I mean, all research points to, moderate protein diet is very effective. Um, consuming too much protein in one sitting, we, we kind of, we have a cap of how much protein is actually absorbed. Everybody's different. So me as a female, that's, you know, smaller than you as a male, right. My cap is going to be smaller than yours in terms of how much nutri or how much, um, protein is utilized in my body in one sitting. Um, mm -hmm. and so you really have to, one, uh, work with probably professional to figure that out, but two is, um, you know, pay attention to those things and, um, big picture, anything that sounds too good to be true is usually too good to be true. So yeah. have a, have a mindful approach to nutrition and be flexible in your approach to nutrition and, um, have variety. So gotcha. Yeah. yeah so no <laughs> crazy changes or anything, just just a, just gradual changes and yep. more awareness of what you're putting into your body. And that's going to serve you the most, right? Exactly. <laughs> well, perfect. Well, is, yeah. do you think there was anything that we left unanswered? Do you think, I think we pretty much went over everything that's important. Yeah. I, th uh, I think it's pretty comprehensive. So yeah. Good. Yeah. I think I'll, I'll direct people's questions towards um, and try to ask you more in the future, of course. And I'll, of course, <laughs> link your your website in the description of the youtube video when i post it and everything like that yeah but thank you thank you so much for your time it was it's, it's awesome to like give everybody this info because i don't want to be uh just not informed about this and give people the wrong info and sure. it's good to give the great info to my players <laughs> yeah right. absolutely yeah well, thank you guys. That was Dana Eshelman. Uh, do you want to say anything about your business at all, Dash of Dana? Do you want to talk about that a little bit before you go? And Yeah, yeah, sure. So um, I started my business, a Dash of Dana, um, just about a year and a half ago now. And um, big focus is on um, athletes in a whole and just helping them understand performance nutrition and how they can ultimately fuel their best, hit their personal best records, um, all of that. I will, I'll send you, you know, I think you have my like Instagram link and that stuff. If people want to follow along there, that, that gives them more insight into my business and all of that. Cool. Yeah. Uh, you do workshops, you do consulting, you do coaching, all of that, right? Yeah. 
Yep. Doc. Mm-hmm. Well, awesome. And yeah, you're going to be a great resource. I'll definitely send some clients your way, especially when they ask about the nutrition. I'm going to give, I'm going to send them straight to you because that's, <laughs> that's what I like to see right there. Um, sure. But awesome. Thank you so much for your time again. Yeah. Um, and uh, we'll definitely be talking again in the future. Wonderful. Thank you. Right. Thank you so much.